Hello Capricorn, welcome to Soul Good. I'm Amber Marie and this is your May 2022 Tarot Scope. If you're curious about the decks that I'm using today, you can find a list of them in the description box below. You can also find links to my social media accounts as well as links to information on personal readings and the Soul Good membership channel on Telegram. If you've seen a Tarot Scope reading from me before, this is probably going to look a little bit different, but I've really enjoyed how the information has come through and it's been very pleasant for me as a reader, so I hope you enjoy it as well. Please do remember that this is a general reading, not a personal reading, so only take what resonates and leave the rest. Okay, Capricorn, before we jump in, I do want to share with you that your energy does feel um, quite calm to me. Uh, it feels pretty balanced. I do feel like you could be experiencing um, a bit of an awakening. I'm getting a bit of head pressure. Uh, maybe you've been experiencing headaches recently uh, or something like that. I'm not a doctor, so I cannot give medical advice. I want to just share that with you right away. But I feel like um, if you have been experiencing uh, some head pressure or, you know, if you do through the month of May, it could be attributed to an awakening that you're experiencing. So I just want to, to bring that forward. Uh, but I do feel like your energy is quite balanced right now. Uh, it feels very comfortable to me. So I hope that uh, resonates with somebody. It could be for someone specific. But I, I like the energy very much so. All right. So please, Father, Mother, Life, Universe, Spirits, Guides, Angels, our cosmic team, our ancestors, our higher selves. What can you tell us, please, about May 2022 for Capricorn? One card coming out for you. Okay. So you do have a mirror. Who or what is triggering you? So that feeling I was getting about this calm and balance and neutrality, um, that could be pushed this month, Capricorn. Okay. I feel like it's important to just share that oftentimes triggers can feel very challenging, right? Um, but often that challenge is presented to us so that we can grow or learn. Um, so for example, if you've been praying or, you know, going into meditation and, you know, talking to your higher self or God or whatever it is and have been asking for, let's say, more confidence, right? Your divine creator will put you in situations or will help you to manifest situations where you're, you can prove to yourself the confidence that you actually have, right? Uh, so I, you know, I want to say that if these things are being brought forward, know that they are for you. Uh, they're not happening to you, right? But for you. And I feel like those triggers, interestingly enough, I feel like some of them are to show you what is not meant for you. And I do feel like there is fear around this. I'm getting burpy energy coming up. I'm very sorry. Please do excuse me. But yeah, I feel like there are fears to be released around, you know, moving away from or, or distancing yourself. Uh, putting up boundaries around people or jobs or situations or um, experiences that don't serve you, that don't feel good anymore, right? Uh, I feel like that could be coming up. Uh, that fear itself could be the trigger, right? Um, just, I don't know. I feel like if this is relevant for you, I feel like you could feel this in almost like the breaking down of relationships, right? Or, or rather, you know, maybe there's a lot of arguments that take place or something like that. Um, that is trying to show you like, this is, we can't keep doing this. Right. And, and I, of course we all get into, you know, disagreements and arguments with, you know, people around us. But I would say if this is for you, I would feel like this is something that's been going on for quite some time. Um, it wouldn't be something that just happened overnight. It wouldn't be a one-time thing. Um, it would be something that's reoccurring, right? And I feel like that's meant to show you like this is not conducive to your growth. Um, it's no longer serving you, right? And on the other side of that, I feel like some of these triggers are just triggers within yourself, um, you know, where you feel like obstacles or challenges keep pres keep presenting themselves to you. 
And I feel like whatever that situation is in regards to, whether it's your spirituality, your faith, your emotions, your um, intellect, right? Your physical world, whatever it is, I feel like it is, it's coming up to show you um, that, that there are things that need to be handled and dealt with and released so that you can grow. Okay. The bottom of the deck for you, Capricorn, beautiful is soul family, call in your tribe. You don't have to do it alone. Yeah. And what's interesting is I feel like once you figure out, um, what's triggering you and you start to move that out of your life, you make room for this soul tribe to come in. Um, I do feel like this is also a nod to say like, you're not alone, like ever, um, your creator, God, you know, is with you, your spiritual team, your higher self is all with you all the time. And all you need to do is call upon them is what I'm hearing. Okay. But I'm also getting here with this is that, you know, allowing some of these things that are not serving you, not meant for you to fall away, to die essentially, right. will allow new things to grow, new relationships, things like this. And I do feel like there are people who are coming in for you. Okay. And I also feel like there's a nod here to the fact that if you notice, like these two people have, have their heads um, pressed up against one another, right? And that would ind indicate to me a very strong connection. So I feel like these people, you will know these people by how strongly connected you feel to them, how you don't feel like you have to explain very much, how they seem to just understand you. Um, you know, you don't seem to fight with them or argue with them or bicker with them. And of course, that's something that you typically tell over time. But I feel like right away, even initial contact with these people, you will feel a sense of calm, a sense of home, a sense of peace, a sense of being held or understood without having to try so hard. Okay. So let's see what else is happening for you this month, Capricorn. Please tell us more about May 2022 for Capricorn. Okay. One card for you here. Okay. The moth. Very interesting because you have that who or what is triggering you, right? And I was saying like, this would be something that you experience a lot of disruption in often, um, you know, conflict arguments, that sort of thing. And the moth is that representation of like moth to a flame, like keep going back to the thing that burns you, that hurts you, that will ultimately kill you. Right. Um, when we're talking about the moth. So I feel like this is an acknowledgement, right? This is, I feel like this is a time the month of May is for you to see those things, whether, and these triggers can be triggers about patterns of behavior, of thinking, of victim mentality, of, you know, belief systems and things that we're trapped in, um, essentially imprisoning, imprisoning, excuse me, ourselves in, right? So this, I feel may is going to be an examination of those things for you. I feel like they're going to be brought to the forefront. And I think you're going to start to see where you have been consistently going back to things that don't serve you, um, repeating patterns or what have you cycles, things that are again, essentially just burning you over and over and over. Okay. So I do feel like, you know, this is an energy of like move away from that. And also even I haven't got this. Um, there have been a few signs that have got this moth out and this yours is the first time that I'm picking up this, um, butterfly energy. Like I'm seeing this as a butterfly as well. And I feel like you are going through a transformative pr like process. You're going through a transformation right now. And, you know, I feel like the things that you're experiencing are, are, um, I, yeah, thank you. Imperative to your growth, your spiritual growth, your soul growth, your, um, the evolution of your life. And so, you know, I feel like these things are, I just like divinely orchestrated, uh, the bottom of the deck for you is the firefly. And I feel like, I feel like I need to, to pull out the book here. Um, as you can tell, a lot of the cards I read are just pure intuition. Um, but I feel like there could be a message here in the guidebook for someone, um, or maybe all of you, but intuitively speaking with that firefly, I'm really picking up this energy of that light that leads you home, like home to yourself, home to your soul. Um, I feel like your intuition is speaking to you. I feel like there's that little voice that's saying, go here, do this. Um, you know, no, that's not a good idea. Yes, this is a good idea. Call that person. 
you know, those sorts of things. Um, and I feel like that is your intuition. That's your divine creator. That's your spiritual team, your angels, your guides leading you towards what is good for you, what is meant for your growth and, you know, what will help you along your path. But let me grab the book here. Just give me a moment to find this card. They're not in like alphabetical order or anything like that. So uh, I really appreciate your patience as I look for this. Okay. Oh, no, that's not right. Hold on. I did. I actually just pulled up the moth, which is interesting. I don't know why I was thinking. Okay. So the firefly is inspired and fantastic yet fleeting. The firefly contains the light of a thousand stars. It's pure, radiant, and illuminating. This high-frequency charge cannot be sustained for long. Therefore, the firefly card indicates a moment of inspiration or awakening that quickly fades if we do not catch it. There is firefly energy behind every poem, song, and invention. Our job is to be ready to harness this creative spirit when it graces our path. What can you do to support this precious and elusive light? When in balance, this energy writes, creates, and brainstorms. When out of balance, it feels burnt out and feels dull. To bring back into balance, write a poem or draw. Okay. Now, with it being at the bottom of the deck here, right, this is indicate. First of all, I want to say um, it is very much so similar what I just read here to that energy of following your intuition, following that light, right? Um, if you don't catch it, like acting when you see it. Okay. Essentially that when those intuitive hits come in, that's your divine creator giving you divine inspiration and you are guided to obey that. Right. So when Jesus spoke about like obeying the father, it's like when you get that intuitive hit, listen, right? Because that moment is fleeting. Um, sometimes that door is only open for just moments. And then when you choose a different path, it's closed. Okay. So I do feel like that is the connection there. However, with it being at the bottom of the deck, I feel like this is something that you may not be doing yet. Okay. Whether it's because you're unaware of it or whether it's because you're deliberately choosing not to, I feel like it's at the bottom of the deck because it's not brought into your reality as of yet. Um, but I do want to say like, this is, I feel a form of preparation in the sense of now that, you know, when you feel inspired to move or, you know, you get that divine inspiration, it's an energy of, okay, go right. Like I said, move, so move. Um, and I feel like now you have that knowledge available to you. So when those moments come, you know, when your intuition, your intuition, excuse me, is giving you like a hell yes. You're like, oh yeah, I remember in that reading, it was like, follow it. Okay. So what else can Capricorn expect for May, 2022, please? What else do they need to know? Oh, okay. That was interesting. All right. So you do have the five of wands and when cards land in this position, in front of me, right? So they're horizontal. That often is indicative for me of that. It can go either way. Okay. Uh, that being said, the five of wands in the upright is an energy of competition, conflict, reality. Um, I often see it as like a preparation. Um, like to me, they look like they're like training for like American Ninja Warrior or something. Right. And so I feel like there is this energy of being prepared for something. However, with it being in the upright, right? Again, it is an energy of conflict and competition. And I feel like because you have that trigger card with that moth to the flame, I do feel like there is an energy of conflict here. And I'm also being drawn to the fact that the first card out in the tarot for you is a fire card. Okay. Um, wands, it's fire energy. And we had that moth, right? So again, I feel like you going back to that same thing is only going to continue to perpetuate conflict or competition or disturbance in your reality. Though, if you continue to do it, you're still going to be learning, right? Now, in the reverse, this is an energy of avoiding conflict and respecting differences, right? So I do feel like it can go either way depending on your choice. 
right? You can choose to say, I'm not going to put my energy, my time into any conflict, right? I'm going to respect that you have a different perspective than I do. And I'm going to excuse myself from the situation, right? So again, it can go either way depending on your choices. However, you do have the Ace of Wands in the reverse as well. And this is um, an emotional loss or being blocked creatively, right? It's, it can also be a feeling of, well, like, I don't want to say, I guess not emotional loss. It's more like an energetic loss, like not having any energy, right? Um, and it's a loss of like passion. And in the upright, the Ace of Wands is about, uh, you know, kind of having this creative spark, um, being inspired, having desire and willpower and passion, right? And being in the reverse, it's like an energy of being bored and not having any passion and no creativity and, you know, a lack of energy. And I feel like this is, I feel like this is how you will know what that relationship, right? Or that situation is that you're meant to be moving away from that's not really serving you. Um, whether it's a relationship, a job, a living arrangement, whatever it is, it has lost its passion, right? You, th that passion, you don't feel that anymore, right? For that relationship or for that job or that hobby or whatever it is, right? It's like, it's gone. It, it's, it's, it's run out of steam. You're like bored with it, right? Um, it could also be, talking about that moth to the flame and, and keep getting burnt, right? There's an energy of like, I'm just over it now, right? Like I'm just over it. I'm bored because I keep doing these things and I keep getting burned and I'm bored now, right? So it's an energy of like, I'm just, I'm just over it. Um, six of swords in the reverse is an energy of like emotional baggage, uh, also unresolved issues. It can also be about resisting transition. And I feel like that is potentially why you've been, get, you've got burned so many times because you've resisted that transition. I feel like you probably have known that this thing is not good, right? Um, that there are a lot of unresolved issues either within yourself or the other person or within the relationship or situation as a whole. And I feel like it's this energy of like, you've kept getting burnt because and and found yourself in this space of boredom and no energy no passion like just over it right because you've been resisting this transition it's it's trying to show you over and over and over again like this is not good for you right and i'm even getting this feeling which you probably couldn't hear it in in the video but um i was getting this feeling of like a blocked like my throat being blocked my speech being blocked. And I feel like there's something there about like needing to just express your truth, whatever that is in regards to whatever. Um, a lot of, and this, the Hierophant has showed up a lot, uh, for a lot of signs for this month. And here it shows up for you in the reverse. The Hierophant in the reverse is an energy of like solitude. Um, it can also be an energy of like blind faith, right? And I feel like this energy of solitude I do feel like there's a need for you to process some things that are going on in your reality uh, to really take a deeper look at your relationships and situations, uh, whether that be a job or a living arrangement, whatever it is. I feel like there's a need to look at these things uh, because I feel like there, again, I feel like there are lessons being learned here. The Hierophant in the Upright isn't it's the archetype of the mentor. It's also like the card of when the student is ready, the teacher appears, right? And I feel like you are, it's like you're in the midst of learning this lesson. Like it's not yet come up and there's a need to step back to really process, to evaluate things, to look at things at a deeper level and give yourself the ability to, for a bit of solitude, right? The ability to process, to really think about things. Um, and also, you know, I feel like there is an energy here about that blind faith and trusting your intuition, trusting that whatever you feel and the reasons that you're feeling it are your, are true. And there it's meant for you. It, you know what I'm saying? Like that you can trust what it is your soul is speaking to you to lead you through life and to lead you to where you're meant to be. Okay. 
So I do feel like this is a month of growth for you, Capricorn. I do feel like it's a month of decisions for you. And, you know, a lot of that is, is in regards to the things that you are experiencing or, you know, repeating rather and keep going back to that are really not serving you. So I do feel like it's a month of release for you. And that's beautiful because that means growth, right? So I hope that this has been helpful for you in some kind of way. I am sending you so, so much love, tons of hugs. I want to thank you so much for sharing your time and energy with me. I am truly so very grateful. Have a beautiful month. Take care of your beautiful soul. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.